Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We will be in Psalms chapter 5 verses 1 through 6 today, as well as Psalms 36 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for the richness of your word. We love you. We praise you. We ask that you make this word rhema to us and help us to have an understanding for how we can apply it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Verse 1 of Psalms 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. So here... This is a Psalm of David. I'm pretty sure. I, I think this was a Psalm of David. And it says, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my groaning. So he's he's calling out to God to listen to his words, right? And and listen not only to his his actual words, but but the state of his heart, right? It says, give ear ear to my words oh lord he is acknowledging that this is his god there is no other god for him right so we know that you know if if there's anyone in heaven we we have no one in heaven but him right as one of the psalms says i think it's a psalm that says that um give ear to my words oh lord consider my groaning give attention verse two give attention to the sound of my cry my king and my god for to you do i pray um we've talked about the fact that you know when god hears your cry he doesn't just hear your cry right he's like a parent in the sense that he knows the differences in your cry whether they are serious cry whether you are you are really in need or or whether you are just in general crying right but it says give ear to my words oh lord so not only talk listen to my words but consider my groaning like the the things that i cannot say give attention to the sound of my cry my king and my god for to for to you do i pray so he's acknowledging that god is not only king like he's king over his kingdom but he is god um and and there is no one that he can come to but him right it's, he's a king who's coming to a king right he so we're talking to the king of kings right he's the lord of lords and he obviously rules as lord over david in a consistent way lording over him why because it says for to you do I pray. So he's not praying to anyone else. He's he's asking God to consider his groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you do I pray. Verse three, O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you to and watch. So here um David is acknowledging his patterns, right? He he lets us know that he seeks God in the morning. It says, Oh Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. So that's when he's crying out to God. It says, In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. So not only is he going out and preparing a sacrifice for God, he is waiting to see the fulfillment and the answer to what he's asking God or seeking God about and he must do this in a consistent way in the morning right for him to be able to state that this is how he does it it says oh Lord in the morning you hear my voice in the morning I pray I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. Do you sacrifice anything to God? Be it in the morning, afternoon, night, day. Are you sacrificing your time to God? Are you getting up, reading your word and, and seeking him for the day, telling him you're reporting to duty, right? And what would he have you do today? That's a sacrifice, right? Sacrificing, you can sacrifice at night when you pray, um, going into the, the, 
the prayer room when you feel like you really want to sleep, going and helping someone when you rather go home, right? Um, obligating yourself to people when you rather just not be involved, right? Having them taking up all of your time. That's a sacrifice, right? That is giving something back to God and expecting him to not only favor you, but love on you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Because he's going to keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And if your mind is stayed on him, he's going to guide you in his path that he, his good works that he has set before you. Remember, that's Ephesians chapter two. So he has the, this plan for you. He has these good works for you. And, and, you know, we can walk them out. That is a part of our sacrifice, our daily sacrifice in which God can use us. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. Verse four, for you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. So God does not like wicked hearts. He does not like wickedness. Remember, wickedness is the steep in sin, right? It is the evil. So it's saying evil may not dwell with you. So evil cannot be in God's presence, right? Um, anything less than his standard cannot come before him and be in his presence because he he is perfect. He is all knowing. He's all seeing. And he has it all, you know, he that's why he created the system with Jesus, right? So that someone could carry that burden of sin, um, carry that burden of wickedness and, and his children could could come back before him in his presence, right? It says, the boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. So the boastful shall not stand before your eyes. So something is going to happen to the boastful to where they can't even enter into the presence of God, right? It says, you hate all all evil doers, those that do evil, those that are not righteous, those that choose other ways rather than choosing God's ways, right? It says, you are, you, the boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evil doers. Um, it says, verse six, you destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. It says, you destroy those who speak lies lies. Who is God going to destroy in the end times in the in those who, who have done such evil? They have lied. They have had evil intentions. They have been bloodthirsty and deceitful. They've done so many evil things. He is going to destroy those that who speak lies. The Lord hates the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. So any man that is out there doing, and woman, of course, as well, who is out there, you know, speaking lies, um, who's bloodthirsty and who is deceitful, God is going to have vengeance on that, right? He is going to vindicate those who it affected, um, who, who were his. It says, you destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhor the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. Psalm 36, verse 12. There the evildoers lie fallen. They are thrust down, unable to rise. So God is saying that the evildoers are going to have an end. Remember, we just uh, saw those who speak lies. Uh, what, no, verse five, the boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. And here it's saying they're there the evildoers lie fallen. They are thrust down, unable to rise. The evildoers are not going to win. Those who seek evil against God's people, against innocent people, they will fall. It says they are thrust down, unable to rise. Wow. And when you're thrust down and you're unable to rise, it just makes you think of death, right? It makes you think of of uh, that they're going to a place where there's no turning back, right? And he is going to have vindication um, for his people against those evildoers. 
And wow. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your strength. Thank you so much for all you've done for us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. There is nobody like you. Lord, prepare us for your return. Let us be washed clean, God, from the inside out. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. All right. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. I believe you died on the cross, and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Jesus, come into my heart. Lord over me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who um did receive Christ as their Savior and Lord, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ himself when he comes to redeem his church. Until then, we need to just allow that Holy Spirit in us and help it, let it walk us and lead us and guide us into all truth. So that truth is going to be um, any question, decision-making that you have, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you in it because he knows the path that God has for you and where he wants you to end up being. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you as children his peace. Take care.